Hi, I'm Jesus Ramirez. Today, I will share with you three examples from basic to advanced of creating seamless patterns in Photoshop. You'll also learn a ton of tips and tricks along the way that you can apply to any project. And stay tuned until the end because I'll reveal a special technique I've used on many TV and movie posters. Let's dive in and start with the essential tools to create a seamless pattern in Photoshop. One of the first features that you need to be aware of is found under the view menu and it is this one right here, Pattern Preview. When I enable this, Photoshop will tell me that this feature works best when using smart objects. No need to convert it into a smart object, you can just press OK for now. I'm going to zoom out. What the Pattern Preview allows you to do is to see everything in your canvas repeated outside of it. The canvas is displayed here in this blue box. And as you can see, if we were to convert this into a Photoshop pattern now, we would have seams and this doesn't look very good. So we need to remove the seams to create a seamless pattern. How do we do that? First, I'm going to disable the Pattern Preview and I'm going to double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. We now need to make sure that the left side of the image matches the right side of the image and that the top matches the bottom. To do that, go into the filter menu and under other, choose offset. What this filter allows you to do is use the vertical and horizontal sliders to push the image in that direction. For example, if I drag this over to the right, I push the image from the left to the right 515 pixels. If I've moved the vertical slider to the right, then I'm pushing pixels down 550 pixels and you can now start to see the seams of the image. I'm just going to try to place this right about the center. By the way, you could also click and drag over the image and move it around, but I prefer to use the sliders. You can use whatever method you prefer. When you have the seams right about the middle, simply press OK. And now we need to make sure that we remove the seams. There are many ways to do that in Photoshop. The easiest way now is probably using Generator Fill. Start by enabling the Rectangular Marquee tool and make a selection around the seam. Give the selection some space to help Photoshop create a better blend. Then hold the Shift key and drag to add the horizontal seam to the selection. Now all we need to do is click on the Generator Fill button, leave the prompt blank and simply click Generate. It will take a few seconds here to come up with a result and all the results are fantastic. As you can see, the seams are completely gone. You can go into the properties panel and choose a variation that works best. In this case, they're all really good. So it really doesn't matter which one I use. So I'm just going to stick with the center one because it has the most crumbles and I think that looks best. This is one of those few times you'll see me working non-destructively. There just isn't a point in keeping multiple layers. But if you decide to work non-destructively, you can certainly do so. What I'm going to do is merge this generator fill layer to the background layer. So I'm just going to press Control E on Windows. That's Command E on the Mac. And now we have one layer. Next, I'm going to go back into the filter menu, choose Other and Offset once again. And I'm just going to zero these out just so that we can start from the beginning. So I'm just going to move the horizontal slider over to the right 876 pixels, which is right about here. And I'm just going to analyze the image and make sure that there are no seams. I do see one right here, so I'm going to have to take care of that one. I'll also adjust the vertical slider to see if there are any other seams. And yes, there's one right here. Both of these seams were created by the generator fill and we'll need to fix both. So press OK. And you can use any feature you like to remove these seams. We're not going to use generator fill. Instead, we'll use the remove tool. No need to waste those generative credits. Now simply drag over the seam and the remove tool will fix it. Then click and drag to remove that other seam and everything looks fantastic. Now, if I go back into the pattern preview under the view menu and press OK, you'll be able to see my seamless texture. You cannot see a single seam and everything looks fantastic. Let's now convert it into a Photoshop pattern. Then I'll show you a trick to make it feel more seamless. So to create a pattern, you need to go into the edit menu and choose define pattern. You can give this pattern any name you want. I'll just call it wrinkled paper and press OK. Now I'm going to create a new document file new and I'll create a large document that's 3000 by 3000 pixels and I'll click on create. Then from the new adjustment layer icon, choose pattern. Click on the drop down and the pattern at the very bottom will be the newly created pattern. So click on that. Then you can adjust the scale, 
Keep in mind that the smaller you go, the more obvious the repetition becomes. In this case, I'll set the scale to 50% and I'll press OK. Now let me show you a trick to make the pattern feel less repetitive. In a pattern like this, what you can do is press Ctrl J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate the pattern. Then you can change the blending mode from normal to multiply. This will make it so that the darker pixels remain and the bright pixels disappear. So essentially the white disappears and we only keep the shadows. Then I can double click on the pattern to bring up the pattern fill and I can change the scale. So I'll change the scale back to 100%. And notice now that I'm introducing new wrinkles to the paper that sort of break up the repeating pattern. So it makes it difficult to see the repetition. So I'll probably go a little bit bigger than this. I'll probably go to 150 like so, and I'll press OK. So you can see the difference before and after. And of course, you can always reduce down the opacity by dragging this slider or even better. You can use keyboard shortcuts. If you press the five key on the keyboard, that'll give you 50% opacity. Three will give you 30%. Zero will give you 100%. And tapping on the zero key twice will give you zero percent. So in this case, I'll do five, six really quickly and leave it at 56 percent. And I think this looks great again before and after just by introducing this extra layer. It makes it really difficult to see the repeating pattern and you can sort of fool the eye. And obviously in a real project, we will have things in the foreground that will make it even more difficult to tell that this is, in fact, a repeating background. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, hit like now and subscribe. Let's now work with this stone mold texture to tackle more challenging difficulties when creating patterns in Photoshop. Again, we'll start by going into the view menu and choosing pattern preview. No need to convert it into a smart object. I'm just going to hold alt and scroll down on the mouse wheel so that we can see what this image looks like at the moment. And one of the things that's going to stick out right away is that we have a darkness around the edges, which will create a problem. So why don't we solve that issue first? Let's work in the pattern preview mode. Then from the new adjustment layer icon, create a levels adjustment layer to control the layer's brightness. And all you need to do is choose the screen blending mode to make the image brighter. What's happening here is that Photoshop is taking this adjustment layer and treating it as a duplicate of the layers below and then applying the screen blending mode, which makes everything brighter. So we're making things brighter, but obviously this is affecting the entire image and we only want it to affect the dark areas. So I'll press Control I to invert that layer mask. A black mask means that nothing will show. And now I can use the brush tool to paint white on that mask to choose what areas are affected by this adjustment layer. I'll make sure that white is my foreground color. I can click on this arrow to swap those or even better, you can press the D key on the keyboard to set your defaults background in foreground colors. In this case, white and black, and then the X key to swap those. So just make sure that white is on top and bring the opacity down to about 50% and the flow to about 50%. And as you can see, as I'm painting in this instance of the image, it updates on all the others. And you don't have to paint directly inside of this blue box. You can paint anywhere on screen and you can see how it affects the entire pattern. If you're having difficulty seeing the differences in brightness, you can go back into the new adjustment layer icon, choose hue and saturation and bring down the saturation to negative 100 so you can see a black and white version of the pattern. And then you can continue painting over the image, but make sure that you're painting on the levels adjustment layer. So here I'm going to just make sure that everything has brightness that is similar to everything else. I'm noticing that the middle part here is quite bright. So it's creating this line through the center of my pattern. So now I'm just going to make that area darker. I can do the same thing, but this time I'll use a curves adjustment layer and I'll choose the multiply blending mode, which will make everything darker. Again, by selecting this layer mask, you can press control I to invert and paint with white on those areas to darken them up. It looks like I made this area a little too dark, so I can undo that and then continue just affecting the areas that I really want to affect, not everything. The point is that we're removing that vignetting and you can switch between these adjustment layers and continue painting accordingly. 
One of the reasons that you might want to use one adjustment layer over the other is that you have control over the areas that you paint it on. If you click on the thumbnail here, you can use the sliders to control how dark or how bright those areas are. So you can continue fine tuning the image after you paint it on the mask. And the same thing is true for the curves adjustment layer. You can click and drag up or down so you can get a better result. What I'm going to do now is select the curves adjustment layer, which controls the darkness and the levels adjustment layer, which controls the brightness by holding shift and clicking on both, then pressing control G to put them into a group. When I click on the eye icon, you'll see the before image. When I click on it again to enable it, you'll see the after much, much better. And this is exactly what we want. When I disable the hue and saturation adjustment layer, you'll see the result. The pattern is looking much, much better and we haven't even touched the seams yet. So it's going to look even better when we're done. Again, I don't care about working non-destructively in this case. So I'm going to hold shift and click on the background layer to select both and press control E to merge those two together. By the way, pro tip, the reason I didn't press control E when I was in the group to merge down is because when you're in a group and you press control E, you merge the group into one layer and we lose the result. So you want to select both the group and the background and press control E to merge those together. What I'm going to do now is disable the pattern preview, then double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And I'm going to go into filter, other, offset. Then I'll move the seams to about the middle, right about here, and I'll press OK. Then enable the rectangular marquee tool and select the seam. But in this case, I'm going to make a larger selection because I want to try to hide some of those shadows and highlights on the edges and also get a better blend. So this looks pretty good right about here. Then I'll click on generator fill and click on generate. We'll wait a few seconds. In Photoshop will give us three amazing variations. You can click on this arrow to cycle through them and see which one you like best. And I think this is the one that I like the most. And also, you might be wondering about the resolution. There's this new feature in Photoshop that allows you to enhance the detail of your variation. So you can click on this icon to enhance the detail and it makes it look a bit sharper and it matches the original background better. Again, I'll press Control E to merge the layer down and I'm going to go back into filter other and choose offset just to make sure that we don't have any other seams. Again, I'll zero these out and then just do about 200 on the horizontal and I'll scan the image around here, which is right about 200 pixels. And look at this. There's a seam right here. We're going to need to fix that one. So keep that one in mind. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the vertical. I'm going to push it down about 200 and I will also analyze this area to see if I see any noticeable seams and I see one right about here. So we'll fix both of those. I'll press OK. And in this case, I will use generator fill because the background image contains a lot more detail than the piece of paper did in the earlier example. And I'm going to look through the variations. I think I like this one the best. And I'll do that one more time right over here, like so. Click on generator fill, click on generate again. And in this case, I'll go with the third variation. Now I can select the top layer, hold shift, click on the background and press control E to merge all those together. Now, if I go back into view and pattern preview, you'll see the pattern looks much, much better. Now, what I'm seeing is that some of the colors are standing out. So let's try to harmonize the colors a bit more so that the image doesn't look like a repeated pattern. So what I'm going to do is create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Then I'm going to change the colors to greens and I can adjust the greens in this image. I'm just going to drag the slider over to the left to get those greens more into the oranges and I can adjust these sliders accordingly. So you can see the difference before and after. See how these green rocks now blend in with the background, making it less obvious that the pattern is repeating. You can also try doing the same thing by clicking on this icon and then clicking directly over the color that you want to affect and then just making adjustments. In this case, I'm affecting those magentas. So maybe I can reduce the saturation a little bit and then shift the hues so that they're not so obviously a different color like so. Before and after. It's a subtle effect, but I think it helps to minimize how the pattern is perceived by our eye and it looks less like a repeating pattern. Now let's convert this image into a pattern. 
I'm gonna go into edit and notice how the define pattern option is disabled. Well, that's because I have a layer mask active. Do you see the focus, the white outline here? That's on the layer mask. If I simply click on the adjustment layer thumbnail, notice the focus, the white outline is now here and go back into the edit menu, you'll see that in fact, I can use this image to define my pattern and I can call it whatever name I want. And to save time, I'll just use that name and press OK. I'll go back into the document I created earlier and I can show you what this pattern looks like by going into the new adjustment layer icon and choosing pattern. And just like before, the pattern we created is the last one there on the list and you can reduce the scale or increase it. And sometimes rotating the angle helps hide the fact that you're dealing with a seamless pattern because the repeatable parts are not so obvious in your design. Now let me show you a challenge that always comes up in my professional work. So what this image represents is a traditional TV and movie poster that I work on. The poster usually has this shape, but I need to create everything else around it in order to accommodate social media graphics and other aspect ratios that the client might need. And sometimes I just have a very small portion of an image and have to make it fit across the entire canvas. So oftentimes I use patterns for that. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to open up this image here and I want to create a seamless pattern out of this fence. And this image presents itself with a couple different challenges it will tackle in this example. First of all, the perspective is going to be an issue. So why don't we fix that first? For that, we will use the Perspective Crop Tool, which is nested under the Crop Tool. This allows you to click and drag to create a grid. Then you can use the corner handles and match the perspective of any object in your image. And once you apply the change, it'll straighten the image to remove that perspective. So notice how I'm following the edges of the fence here. And I actually want to include this side piece here. If things are too difficult to see, you can hold Alt and scroll up on your mouse wheel to zoom in. And you can hold the space bar as you click and drag to pan. And again, we want to make sure we get the edges here. By the way, if you're working in an area of the image where it snaps to another object, like it's snapping to the top here, you can always hold down the control key to temporarily disable snapping and it no longer snaps. In this case, I don't need to worry about that, but it's a tip that may help you in your projects. Anyway, I just want to make sure that I get the edges there and everything is looking fantastic. You can always click and drag down or drag up to adjust the height. But in this case, we don't need to do that. This looks pretty good. Now I'll simply press the enter key to commit the changes and I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen and we have successfully removed the perspective from that image. So that's step number one. Next, I'm going to go into the view menu and choose pattern preview just to see what we're working with. I'll zoom out and this is already looking pretty good. I'm not really concerned about the seams from the top to bottom, just the seams going from left to right because that is all that is going to be shown in my final project. I'm just going to double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen and I'm just going to go and see if there's anything that I need to work on. And it looks like I have a couple issues. First of all, the railing here on top, it's both darker and whiter on one side than the other. So let's fix it first by recreating it. I'm going to go into the view menu and disable the pattern preview and I'll pan, put the image in the center here. Now I'll select the rectangular marquee tool to make a selection over the area we're going to recreate. With the eyedropper tool, I'm going to select the color of the metal there. And in a new layer, I'll fill with that foreground color. Alt and backspace, and you'll notice how I filled with that color. I'll now disable the selection by pressing Ctrl D. Now we need to make this gray rectangle more realistic by adding shadows, highlights, and maybe even a texture. To start, go into the FX icon and choose Drop Shadow. Start by applying the shadow color. Shadows are never black, so choose the color of a shadow already found in the wood, like this dark brown here, and make the proper adjustments to make it work with your scene. In this case, I'll adjust the opacity, the size, and anything else that I need. In this image, it looks like the light is coming from the left-hand side. So rotate the angle to the left and make any other adjustments to match the lighting to your scene. Then you can click on Bevel and Emboss, you can reset it to default and then just adjust it accordingly to try to match the original image. So in this case, maybe at about 100 and then soften it up a little bit so that it's smoother and adjust the depth accordingly. 
the angle of the light was adjusted to match the drop shadow, so everything looks pretty good. Then apply a pattern overlay, and you can see all the patterns we've made and others. In this case, you can use any pattern you like. Why don't we use water and choose this one here and change the blending mode to luminosity so that we apply the brightness values onto that color and we can just reduce the opacity way, way down just to create a little bit of variance. So it's not all the same color and we can maybe bring the scale down to say 50% and I think that looks pretty good. Then I'll press OK and that is my result. What I'll do now is choose this layer and merge it down to the layer below. Again, this is one of the few times you'll see me working non-destructively. Next, we're going to go into the filter menu, choose other, and from here, select offset. I'm going to zero these out just so that I can control how they move. You probably noticed by now that these menus are sticky, which means that they will have the same settings applied as the last time you used the filter. I'm just going to drag the horizontal slider to the right here and just make sure that these areas look fine. They're not perfect, so we can adjust them a little bit. I'm going to pan and move this around just so that we can see the edges better. And instead of doing general fill, why don't we do something different this time? I'm just going to zoom in and see where the issues are. I can see some issues here. So we'll use the clone stamp tool to fix these areas. This tool allows you to copy pixels from one area to another. Just hold Alt and click over the area you want to copy. Then paint over your seam and it easily removes it. Now just pan over your image to see if there's any other areas you need to work on. And there's another seam here and I think I can easily hide it by selecting the blur tool and just blurring that edge a little bit so it's not so sharp. And I'll do the same thing on this other side and I think that should be enough to hide it. We're just hiding those small imperfections. Something else I would recommend working on is removing anything that would make it obvious that we're working with a seamless pattern. So right now, if I go into view, choose pattern preview and press OK, you'll notice that a lot of these scratches here on the wood make it obvious that we are working with a repeating pattern. So I'm going to hide a lot of these imperfections so that it's not so obvious. I'll disable the pattern preview and I'll hide those imperfections by using the remove tool. I'll reduce the brush size by tapping on the left bracket key on the keyboard. Those are the keys found to the right of the letter P in North American keyboards and I'm just going to paint over the image and you'll see that they disappear. I'm now clicking over these and they're disappearing as well. This tool is fantastic for removing blemishes and other distractions in your photos. Like in this case, we're removing the imperfections over the wood. So I'm just painting this away like so. And you can see now that it's going to be much harder to tell that this is in fact a repeating pattern because there's no obvious marks, no obvious elements that are repeating. It won't be a perfect result, of course, but it'll be much more difficult to tell that the pattern is repeating. There we go. I'm going to go back into the view menu and choose pattern preview. I'll press OK and I'll zoom out and you can see that it's now much more difficult to tell that this is a repeating pattern. Watch what happens when I go into window and choose history and then scroll up and click right here where it says pattern preview. This is when we enabled it before we applied the remove tool. So when I click on this, you'll see the difference. See that? Much better when you remove those imperfections. I'm going to go ahead and disable the pattern preview and I'll now create the pattern. Edit, define pattern and give it any name you want and press OK. Now I'm going to come into the composite that I'm working on and I'm just going to create a shape that will contain the fence and I can make this fence as big as I want. So we'll just say that we want the fence going across the image like so. Now under the properties panel under fill, I can click on this fill box and then click on the pattern here and you'll see the fence right here. There's our fence. And all I need to do now is make adjustments to the scale. I can make this larger or smaller to match the image. I actually prefer working with the view here that you get when you double click on the image. I think this one allows me to click and drag and place the image better along the image. And to work with finer adjustments, just click inside the input box and use the up and down arrow keys like so. So I'm just pressing the down arrow key to make this smaller 
and I can just adjust it any way that I want. So I know that this is the top here, and by the time this other line shows here at the bottom, that means that we've gotten too far. So I can just keep making this smaller and clicking and dragging down to make sure that we get the right scale for this particular project. And it requires a bit of fine tuning, but I think you're going to be impressed with the results. There we go. I'm going to drag this up a little more and I'll press OK. Now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make sure that the edges work. By the way, notice that I have a stroke here, so I'm going to disable the stroke so that it doesn't show and maybe drag this one pixel down to hide the edge there. Scroll down to the bottom and maybe drag this one up like so. I'll zoom out and we have our fence. You can drag this and make it as long as you want and it will match the entire area of the composite. Also, you can double click on here like I mentioned earlier and then you can drag this over to the right a little more if you need to to make sure that that edge doesn't look weird. So maybe right about here. I didn't like how that edge was looking there on the right. And of course, you can always zoom in and verify that you made the right adjustment in there. I missed it by just a tiny little bit, so I'm going to just drag up like so. And I'll press OK. And my image is looking fantastic. Next, I'll share two tips to make this fence even better. This is not a perfect pattern. You can still see some repetition, but let's try to fool the eye and create a little bit of variance in this pattern. For this trick, the first thing we need to do is create a new document. So go into File and New. Now we're going to create a document that has the same width and height, but they need to be numbered to the power of two. For example, two, four, eight, 16, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 248, and so on. So in this case, we'll just do 1024 by 1024. So why those numbers? Well, here's an interesting fact with the clouds filter algorithm. It works by generating a seamless pattern with these values. Now press the D key to enable the default foreground and background color, black and white. Then go into filter, render, and choose clouds. This will generate a seamless pattern because we use those values that the algorithm uses to generate the clouds. Notice that when I go into the view menu and choose pattern preview, the pattern is seamless. There are no edges. Now I can simply go into edit, define pattern, press OK, and come back into my working document. And above the fence, I'm going to create a brand new pattern and I will use that same pattern we just generated, the clouds pattern right there. Then I can change the blending mode to overlay and reduce the opacity like so. And then I can press Control Alt G to clip it to the layer below so that it only affects the fence. And now I can start adjusting it. I can make the scale a little bit larger, smaller, whatever it requires to create that variance in the fence so that it doesn't seem like it's the same fence repeating over and over again. We're only trying to fold the eye. If you look really carefully, you will see the repetition. But what we're trying to do is just create a little bit of variance to fold the eye like so before and after. And I want to show you one last thing that related to patterns, but I think is worth mentioning. If you want to blend this into the background image here, then you can use a layer mask and a brush. So you can create a layer mask on that pattern and then we'll use a brush to blend in the grass. So choose the brush and click on this down pointing menu. And we're going to need to add our grass brush, but we don't have it here. For some reason, Adobe decided to hide the brushes in Photoshop. Let me show you how to find them. Click on this gear icon and choose Legacy Brushes. Press OK, go back into that menu and you'll see the Legacy Brushes here. And under search, simply type in grass and you'll get the grass brush right over here. Then go into this icon here to enable the brush settings and disable the color dynamics in the transfer. That way we only use the foreground color and no other colors. And we're going to make black our foreground color. Then I'm going to tap on the right bracket key to increase my brush size and I'm going to paint with black. But earlier we set the opacity to 30%, so I'll increase it to 100 and I'll do the same for the flow. And when I paint, you're going to see that the grass is going to start coming through. And by the way, here's another tip. If you click once, 
and hold shift and click again, Photoshop will draw a straight line between those two points. If you click, hold shift and drag, Photoshop will draw a straight line. So you can use either of these techniques to paint the grass in. What I'm doing here is simply holding shift as I drag left to right. And if you made it this far, hit like now and subscribe. I'm Jesus Ramirez. Thank you so much for watching.